Hey guys, I am Perry Nemroff and welcome back to Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the articles that go up on Collider.com and you want to check out some of the best of the best right in one spot. We're moving on over to Movie Talk right now and there is a big, big rumor that's circulating right now regarding Netflix possibly being sold to Disney, which would just be a huge game changer if that deal goes through. I feel terrible for their competition because they'd own quite a bit. Let's check out what the movie panel thought about the story. Yeah, th this is the road to Skynet becoming self-aware, <laughs> seriously. This is the, I mean, this empire is just growing, growing, growing. I'll buy it, I'll buy it just fine just because the the uh, Marvel Netflix series have been crushing it on Netflix. Yeah. Marvel linked to Disney, Disney. So I mean, it, it's a triangle that completely makes sense. Um, I don't think it's going to change a lot of what we have, but it may give us more of what we can enjoy. So I'm buying it for sure. What do you think, Mark? It's a, it's a buy for me. It's a huge buy for Netflix. I mean, if Netflix can get Disney original content to not only be on their platform but be exclusive to Netflix, that's a huge win in a very competitive market. When you just have AT and T and Time Warner teaming up with other streaming services. So for Netflix to remain the top dog, this makes a lot of sense for them. This is a huge buy from, if I'm looking at this from the perspective of Disney, it would be very difficult today because you know Disney would love to have an avenue directly into their fans' homes. But to try to start up a new service right. in an environment where you have a Hulu, where you have a Netflix, where you have you know Amazon Prime, where you have all that kind of stuff, that would be incredibly challenging. Netflix is still the king of the hill. If Disney can actually acquire Netflix, I have no doubt you're going to see production and ideation on various Marvel properties that we know would never get made on the big screen, but it opens up such huge avenues for them to develop a lot of things for Netflix series that we probably wouldn't even think they would do Netflix series on. It really does open the floodgates there. From a Netflix point of view, I don't know how good of a thing that is, I like as a Netflix subscriber, I don't know if I want Netflix to suddenly become all Disney all the time. And nothing says in this report that that's what Disney would do. Nothing says Disney will get rid of everybody else's content and just do theirs. I'm sure they wouldn't. That would be my one fear. But if you're Disney, you have to like this. If you're bummed about the Inhumans movie not happening, you are in luck because it was just announced that Marvel greenlit an Inhumans TV series for ABC. Let's check out what the Heroes panel thought. I'm really happy about the IMAX. I'm really happy that we're actually going to get an Inhumans. I'm a little worried about what this means for the story because I was so in on Vin Diesel being Black Bolt. Mm -hmm. And now because of this series, I kind of think that that will not happen. Well, especially mm. because he's overdoing Guardians of the Galaxy stuff and mm. we know that there's no longer any tie between the movies and yeah. the TV universe. It really makes me concerned about what is what is the ongoing storyline of this? Mm -hmm. Like, what is going to be, it, it, will it be Kamala Khan as our lead character? Do you think it'll just be Frankenstein together from what the Inhumans movie was supposed well, to be? Well, that's another thing is like, yeah, will it be the leftovers of the Inhumans movie or will it have connections to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because they did the Inhumans and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. or will they completely ignore that? That's more of like my concern right now. I think the formatting and the idea of how they're going to shoot is very exciting, but I'm now I'm like, mm, what is the story? How to introduce these characters if they're going to be the, the classic Inhumans or they're going to be the Marvel Knights yes, and humans. What, yes. are we, what are we going to see? Or if it won't even have the royal family of the Inhumans in the show, it'll just be like lesser known. In no, humans. no, no. It's going to. They say it right there. It's going to be the oh, royal family. That's okay. what it's about. If, if anything, I'm taking away from this that they're going to rock a Game of Thrones style thing, but with Inhumans and have Ma uh, Maximilian uh, Maximus, sorry, Maximus. Maximus, his brother, be a part of that thing. And my guess is they've probably already sealed them away on some dome on the moon. I, mm. I'm just thinking like mm. a way to create a contained environment, which is how the Inhumans were originally introduced in the Fantastic Four back in the 60s. They were domed off pretty much immediately. Are they currently domed under the Hudson River? I'm just so, saying wherever yeah. they're going to be, they're going to yeah. get domed. Dome I mean, off. Dome yeah, yeah, yeah. Put them under that dome. Yeah, because it creates a contained <laughs> under environment. Under the dome did so well. Yeah. Right. I don't know about <laughs> under the dome, but they will be under a dome. <laughs> we have a brand new Star Wars canon novel that is out and available right now. So during Jedi Council this week, we talked a little bit about how much we've read so far. So it's a mini review of sorts. Check that out right now, a brief preview of that conversation. And then if you want to hear more about Catalyst, you can also check out Christian's interview with the author, James Lucino, on the YouTube channel as well. It is perhaps the best of the new canon books that's saying a lot because Lost Stars is amazing. Lords of the Sith is another solid book. I even like Life Dead. Um, they all the books are really good. They have good moments and stuff like that. Um, this one is like I said. You heard me earlier talking about the connection of the prequels, but Lucino. 
who did great work writing Robotech books for me as a kid. He writes Tarkin. You can hear yeah. Mads Mikkelsen's voice in Galen Erso. You can hear and see Mendelssohn's performance as Krennic in this. It brings these characters to life. And you're right. I went back and watched the trailer and was like, oh, a little bit more. Oh, they used to be buddies. Yeah. And I'm a little more excited. Well, you know, and funny, he talked about that with, I asked him if he got a chance to read the script, if he read the treatment. He wrote this book in a year. He wrote this book in a year, and I also asked him about the reshoots, if, if it was a matter of if he had to change some of his stuff, and the reason it was pushed back is because of the reshoots. It changed the story. Did they do some reshoots on Rogue One? They did indeed. Uh -huh. um, but, Perry, so you are also, you are listening to this one. I am. And you, so what are you thinking so far? Are you enjoying it? Are, are, are we on the same page? I'm like, like four hours into my audio book right now, and I freaking love this yeah. thing. I, I really, so one of your I favorites? mean. It's one of them, I can't say that until I finish it, but right off the bat, it is one of my favorites. Right. It goes back to what I was saying before, where the opening of this book, because you guys know how it is when you pick, well, not you. Yeah, I, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> you know how it is when you pick up a book, though. You don't really get into it until I, maybe even sometimes a couple hundred pages right. in. Then yeah. you're fully immersed, you're invested in the characters, and you feel the momentum of it. This, however, Right, right away. from yep. the start. Yep. For Nightmares this week, we are going to highlight a new trailer for an independent movie that's coming out called Replace, and it is actually about a girl who is afflicted with a strange skin disease and must replace her dying skin with skin from living folks. So the panel was a little divided on this one. Let's check out a little bit of that conversation. I had no idea this movie was a thing. Mm -hmm. I had not heard of it. I had, but I loved this trailer. This trailer worked for me big time. So how did you feel about it? I liked it. I mean, I love Barbara Crampton from Beyond. Oh, she's been in so many amazing films and recently a lot more. So it's co it's cool to see her return to a lot of horror films. Um, the trailer definitely. I'm I'm mixed on the trailer. Mm -hmm. I need to see the film. But what the trailer did do is its job. Now I want to see the movie. Uh, it felt very uneven and just sort of like you know it's called replace and then you have to have that line in there. What we need to do is have your body replaced with others. And I was like, all right, now I get it. But you know what I mean? It's a, it's a little on the nose, and I, I just want to see where it goes. It seemed a little bit more on the more independent side, where it's not really horror or thriller. It's more kind of like in your imagination. You're filling in a lot of the blanks, so I wanted some skin. I wanted some like real like give it give it to me. Like I want to see her rip skin off of somebody and put it on her body. But that <laughs> might be in the movie and save for the movie without the trailer and ruining it. But it just didn't land with me as well as maybe it did for you, Clark. Interesting. All right, Perry, how about you? I like the color palette of the movie. I like the tone of the movie, and I just like the way that this trailer was structured, where. You know, it starts off, and I think it's one its one way. I just referenced Excess Flesh and Contracted, and those were the two movies that came to my mind. I'm like, oh, another one of this. And then all of a sudden, it does add that little twist. It's a its a, a skin effect I haven't really seen before. It's And you could see also, the trailer isn't just about, oh, look at this creepy thing mm -hmm. she's going to do with her skin. It's about, look at this girl who's going to have to sacrifice, I'm assuming, her morals and everything she believes in in order to survive. Mm -hmm. And that intrigues me. So at this point, I think I kind of want to see it. Now let's move on over to the interview portion of the show. First up, we're going to cover one of my own. I got to talk to the cast of Manchester by the Sea, and I asked them some of your mailbag questions. So let's check out Casey Affleck's answer to one of them. Thomas George wrote to us, do you think it is more beneficial to a filmmaker's career to win an Oscar or to have a very successful movie at the box office? It's really interesting. I would, I think that they're beneficial in different ways. I'm not skirting the issue here. I think that there's, if you, uh, being in a movie that is a huge box office hit is going to, there are all those people who that's all they care about and they run numbers, what is this actor's value? And they say, okay, we'll put him in a movie. We're gonna, because we know other people have seen him in other movies and that's gonna make our investment a little bit safer. Um, I, but I, you know, being uh, in a movie that is so well received that it is acknowledged by the Academy also um, is, means that people get to know you, get a little bit more exposure, and also it means that you must have done something right and you must be on uh, a good artistic path. And I think so for that reason, the latter I would prefer. I prefer to be in a movie where the community of people with whom you work acknowledge you and say, hey, that was great work, than um, in a movie that just is marketed well and makes a bunch of money. Next up, we've got a clip from Steve's interview with Haley Steinfeld for the movie The Edge of Seventeen. 
I love this movie. It's one of my favorite of the year. I can't recommend it enough. Please go see it this weekend. But for now, let's check out a clip from their interview. One of the things I think that's really cool about this movie is it captures when you're 17, everything is literally the most important thing that's happened in the universe. Mm -hmm. Nothing else matters. Right. You know, if you don't get that text, whatever. Uh, so talk a little bit about that aspect of the story and the script. Well, I think, I mean, being a teenager, those years out of any years in your life are that's the time where, like you said, everything, if it's great, it's amazing, it's the best thing that could ever happen to your life and will be the only great thing that happens to your life ever, and if it's bad, it's the end of the world. Um, and this is, this movie is this character on both sides of the spectrum, and there's almost no middle. Um, and I think being a teenager, that's kind of, I mean, I've experienced that myself, where you experience the highest of highs and the lowest of lows within like four minutes. Um, and this movie does such a great job in really capturing that and, and the in-between moments. There's an interview up on comicbook.com right now with Gabriel Luna who plays Ghost Rider on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and in it he gives some hints that they're discussing maybe a spin-off series for his iteration of the character. Is that a good idea? Let's see what the TV talk panel thought. I think if he was gonna put it into a solo spin-off thing, I think they should put it on Netflix. I think he should be thrown into that Defenders world. Okay. Because I don't think the solo spinoff of a Ghost Rider in the Darkness really works on an ABC kind of thing. Just keep Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. there. And if you're going to spin off characters, either spin them off into Netflix mm -hmm. or spin them off in a, in a place that isn't network television. Listen, I haven't seen, uh, I've only seen the first two episodes of the season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but he was the most impressive thing coming out of there. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I think he should be on Netflix. Just because, I don't know, it's just ABC. It's, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's ABC. Like they do what they do, they do what they do well. You know, but it's just I, I don't want to see him on ABC because I said that's the darkest thing they've ever done on the yeah. show. He needs to be on Netflix where they don't have to hold back as much. So I like this yeah. actor. I like him. I want to see him do more. Very charming guy. I yeah. have not watched any of it, so I can't really speak beyond the fact that what I can say is all of my favorite shows that have debuted this season have been truly original. Atlanta, This Is Us, Pitch. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sick of it. Like, I'm having major burnout. I don't want another superhero show. Too many? I, it's too many. Like, you, I don't need to see to another spinoff. Yes, but that's original. Again, okay. like, what I don't need to see is the Aubrey Plaza spinoff show out of Legion. Okay. I don't need that. Yeah. Let Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. exist as it is. I just please more originality bring new characters bring, give us another preacher all those Do characters something new i just i don't need it i don't need another spinoff all those characters that we haven't seen in movies or that aren't big enough for movies like you're saying give Put them, them a, show. a show yeah, yeah. But yeah. give them a, and let him a be a great part of agents of shield because you guys have, which he is that's been like the biggest thing that i've taken away from what hearing you guys talk about it is how incredible he is so yeah. let that be the boon it doesn't have to be its own thing now it's time for the collider.com portion of the show when we get to highlight some of the written features done by the gang over there there's a whole lot of Westworld theories out there, and if you're having a tough time wrapping your head around them all, fear not, Haley Fouch has a feature up and running that addresses all of the big theories. That being said, this article is obviously packed with spoilers, so if you're not caught up on the show, you might want to save this one for later. Staying in spoiler territory, we've got a great piece from Matt Goldberg for folks who have already seen the movie Arrival. This one is called Arrival and the Power of Empathy, and it focuses on the message of the movie and how it offers up some hope via the exploration of the power of communication. No spoilers in this next one. In fact, you might want to read this one before seeing Fantastic Beasts and where to find them this weekend. In this article, Nick Romano covers all of the information you need to know about Johnny Depp's character, Gellert Grindelwald, who's expected to appear throughout the film franchise. Next up, we've got another one from Matt Goldberg. He gave the extended cut of Suicide Squad a watch, and he broke down what we get in those extra 11 minutes and whether or not they filled plot holes and or made the characters more interesting to him. And lastly, we've got a staff piece that everyone needs to read. It's 22 movies to help cheer you up. There's such a great wide range of material here from Frozen to Clueless, School of Rock, and so much more. So go check that out and have an uplifting weekend. Now it is time for the Schmodown portion of the show, and this week there is only one match for us to share with you. It is a team match between the Wolves of Steel and the Real Rejects. Let's get a preview of how it went down. I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of expectations put on us in the beginning, Yeah. and uh, we did not win our first match. What was it? Dead or alive. And oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Well, John and I are back for the movie trivia Schmodown. We lost to a tango and cash question. We went into a state I hate of that movie. No! We went addicted to many kinds of narcotics, but now we're back after rehab. We're ready. A lot of meditation. 
We fresh pressed juice. Yes, a lot of fresh pressed. A lot of colon cleansing we did. The real rejects. Pouring a note from Awesome oh, Mix Volume oh, One, full of Pratt Falls, full of flamboyance and showmanship. The Wolves of oh. Steel. What a gentleman holding the curtain for yeah. the lady, wearing their name brand that. shirts, coming out to a horror classic soundtrack. I like the dance, but they're also, I like that, dancing the two, a scary song. Ever After, it's a Cinderella story starring who as the protagonist, Danielle? Uh, Drew Barrymore? That is correct. They're on the board, the wolves of steel are biting again. Which gangster film featured Christian Bale as FBI agent Melvin Purvis? Public enemies. And they're on the board as well. So now the reason we only have one match for you, it's because there's a special video up right now. It is a ranking special. So if you want to check out Christian and Ken going over the rankings, if you want to see where everyone stands right now, check that video out. And we're going to play a brief clip from it right now. Out of the both the singles and the teams, we've got a, a lot of dominant teams, a lot of good performances lately. How are you feeling about the league right now? I'm feeling it's growing and there's excitement and it's only going to get better as more and more characters and more and more fighters come in and bring their own area of expertise. Some of the recent debuts just brought the league to a new level. Yeah. What I'm really enjoying about the team competition is that we are that allows us to bring new people in as well, but it also, uh, it's a different discipline. It's a different thing. You're relying on someone else. Right. You gotta trust your partner. You gotta have faith in your partner. And that's also could possibly break up teams if things go wrong. That, that's an added element I really like. Absolutely. And now it is time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show when we get to highlight some memes or artwork that some of you fine viewers have sent in. We have a wealth of memes to go through this week. So first up, I'm gonna highlight some that were inspired by the Schmodown. This first one comes from Clint, who goes by the name Floyd Pinkster on Twitter, and he sent in the home edition of the movie trivia Schmodown. I really kind of want this. Then we also have a great video from Brian Ward on YouTube. I'm not gonna intro this thing, just watch it for yourself. And lastly, if you've been watching our shows this week, you probably know that the plague is circulating the office right now. So Jonathan Caro took it upon himself to make a Collider version of the Contagion poster. So there you have it. Thank you guys so much for sending those in. If you want your own meme or piece of artwork featured right here on Best of the Week, super easy to do. Pick a moment from one of our shows, make something about it, and then send it on over to mailbag at collider.com, or you can tweet it at us using the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. I go through them all, I love looking at them all, and if I love it enough, maybe it'll be on next week's show. Oh, I have so much I wanna do next week. Hang out with my family, I just, I'm like so, so happy I'm not sick at the moment. Well, Gotta, Lori, I dude. I got sick. Oh. Do you know where the urgent care is? You should probably go to the hospital, like now. Got a little over here. <laughs> Well, Josh, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. Everyone seems to be getting sick here. I am the only one who's, I think, one of the few people that are still surviving. I'm battling it, but I I'm okay for now. I'm gonna come lick your face after this. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch out. The last of us is a good thing you came in there not kind of made the movie. I don't want to rap report this. There's something <laughs> freaky <laughs> with a real human walking around in a talking candlestick with an accent. Like, why are you not slapping this thing away? It's just, it, there's something that's off putting to me about this. It's like an acid trip. It's like a worse acid trip than Dr. Strange to me. What's going on, guys? The sickness got to John Campia, but we are the strong and we are here today bringing you movie talk. No one's going to get me sick. That's a. <coughs> I'm just kidding. Psych. I feel like a 10 year old kid who found a Playboy magazine. Do I know exactly what I'm looking at? No, but it's exciting. It's new. It's fresh. I don't really understand everything that is going on on the page, but man, it's a whole new world. Who are you? Just some guy with popcorn down his pants. Now, if if he has, um, I'm gonna sneeze. Great. Oh, here we go. 
Sneeze, sneeze balls. Let it out. Stop. Let it out. Let it go. Makuga, what? you talk too much. It's going to yeah. go away. Well, we have a exactly. show to produce. <laughs> the fact that you see the X Wing, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so You've excited. You've been in this talk. studio for 15 minutes yeah, and you've I'm caught. Sorry, 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 You've been around Sinead for like a What you guys <laughs> didn't see was Sinead licked his face no. in the middle of the shot. She really did. <laughs> She's got a sneeze. She's got a sneeze. Spoiler alert. Now I have sneeze blue balls. Me too. Josh gave them to me before forever. the show started. Whoa, guys, I'm not giving anybody blue balls, okay? I was not surprisingly and pleasantly not affected by the sickness this week. However, our own Cody Hall, a.k.a. Spider-Man, actually figured out who Patient Zero was. I can't reveal that information yet. <laughs> All right. Starting off with our first uh. story. <laughs> <laughs> Or you want to be the creepy guy in the theater by yourself with popcorn, you can do that, too. Um, so, yeah, it's a Ew, big buy. don't Absolutely. do that, Les. I'm going to buy it. That's so creepy. Right. So so <laughs> Anybody seen Elmo? <laughs> Mark? It seemed more arts, uh, artsy. I almost said artsy fartsy. Sorry. Perry, how about you? I kind of just want a horror movie called Artsy Fartsy right now. I feel like we can come up with some pretty gnarly I just, body horror with I that. just wrote it. Like right now. Once all the ballots have been tabulated and the nominees are named, new ballots are sent out to every academy. <laughs> I, I do care for you or something. Yeah. Every oh, day David do, do, do. I swear. No, that's no. different. That's, 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 that's all for one. That's oh, all. That's wow. all for one. Yeah. Sorry. Like, oh my god. Like all that kind of stuff. Just stop doing that silliness. How do you like know it? he's not? What if he has an eye patch? What? And a half <laughs> yeah, he's he's a, I'm Detective he, Scribbles. He, <laughs> Let me find out what happened. He, he's actually the investigator <laughs> from the Kevin Smith yeah. movie, right? Yeah. Who killed yeah. Tupac? We must yeah. find my out. My nose keeps turning. My nose keeps. This yeah. is a ruse. This is actually Mordecai too. And it's coming. Oh. What are you laughing at? Just that photo. Where is it? Like all the nerds. It's the original home. It's like relax. <laughs> Who cares, really? But it's just like seven people. It's the original home from Curse of Chuck. <laughs> That's what's making me laugh. If I don't choose Star Wars, then I wasted being a virgin for so long. <laughs> All right? Um, His trailer was like a 17-year-old Mark Ellis finding a Playboy magazine and being like, I know exactly what I'm looking at, and I want more. <laughs> from one very artsy-fartsy movie to another, last week, Don Mancini gave the hope to horror fans uh, looking for more from Chucky, the artsy-fartsiest of franchises. Yep. How many times can we say artsy fartsy in one episode? So many because Lots. we're talking about so many artsy fartsy things. Do we need more popcorn from the floor? More floor corn? Oh, I've been eating floor corn, so. Um, want some? <laughs> It's uh, him so in biker shorts, and girls will like be doing squats and be like, "Yeah, girl, with that form." Like it's so softcore horny. Basically, I go to hand him the VHS, and I was like, "Will you sign it?" And he was like, "Oh, only if you use it." And I was like, "Oh, honey, I use it." Oh, <laughs> I like watching the crumbs fall to the floor. Stop! <laughs> Do not ruin Cookie Monster, Mark. Please, that is all Little I ask. Cookie, you. cookie, near, <laughs> I buy this. No. Bunch of creeps. I promise you this, John Campy has never taken another day off after today. <laughs> I, 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 that's one thing Campy I can buy right there. <laughs> And with that, that is a wrap on today's episode of Collider Best of the Week. Just a heads up, we are taking the week off next week because of Thanksgiving, so you have to wait two whole weeks to get another episode of the show. It'll be okay, it'll be great when we come back. I am Perry Nemroff. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at pnemroff. Please go on over and bookmark Collider.com. Subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel. Watch and read everything, but just in case you don't have enough time, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a great weekend and a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.